The difference between data scientist, data analyst, and business analyst. I'll talk about the key differences. The career trajectories also help you figure out which one is right for you. So I know there have been lots of tech layoffs recently. Uh, I think I'm fine for now, but. It is scary, like whenever I open my LinkedIn and it would be just like flooded with posts saying open to work, I recently was impacted by the layoff at XYZ company. It really hit close to home this morning, like 10 minutes before I started filming, I was brushing my teeth and then my boyfriend kind of just like jumped out of bed and then he was like, oh my goodness, my company is having like layoffs right now. So he checked his email, HR sent him an email saying, you are continuing your employment with XYZ company so it was just like oh my gosh gosh it, it was hitting so 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 close and I think now I really understand what it feels like to like all of a sudden lose something and you are kind of out of control for it so if you're impacted by the layoffs I hope you find a job soon and find new opportunities for you but yeah it's just really scary right now in tech I would say especially I'm making my favorite smoothie. I'll put the recipe here. I recently got these glass, and I think they're perfect for coffee and smoothie. Got these like glass straw. It's a lot easier to clean because you can see through it, and also it's not cold when you sip on it like metal straws do. So looking at my calendar today, I have a one-on-one -on -one with a business analyst who has the same role as me, but he works for a different region. I think it's just really comforting to do one-on-ones with people that like have the same role as you, who understand what you're going through, and kind of figuring out what this business analyst role and trajectory looks like. And I'll spend around an hour and a half of like focus time to put together a business report, um, basically diagnosing our user trends for the past two weeks. Right after that, I'll have a call with a data science team to walk them through the report. And then this is where we um, refine the business narrative and pull any data we need to support it. Then I will end the day sending that report out as an email to our executives. <laughs> got a new vertical monitor because now I can close this MacBook fully and I can just look at these two big screens and then drag it down so I can literally see like what 77 rows in one screen So my goal today is to send out the growth report I know I look calm here, I added some music here and it's a whole vibe but my brain is actually on fire. This requires an intense amount of focus and I usually just stare at the screen for an hour or two straight. And the first step is just me going to the Tableau dashboards to look at our core metrics performance on a high level. I will start building insights around them by putting them into a deck. It's basically like you're seeing all these numbers in front of you. Your goal is to structure them in a way that's easy to understand and tell a story around these numbers. In this day in life video, I talked about storytelling with data. So check it out, link below. I want to give a quick shout out to Casetify for sponsoring today's video. Casetify is the world's most known tech accessory brand known for their protective phone cases and collaborations. They have cases for everyone and different personality types. If you're an active explorer and is always out and about and on the go, Casetify's bounce cases are perfect for you. The bounce cases have a 21 feet drop protection and each of the bounce cases are test dropped for 156 times. And they're powered by EcoShock Absorption Tech. The expanded corners allow your phone to turn into any heart stopping drop into a simple bounce. The bounce cases also come with more than 2000 designs available and you can also customize them. This one is my favorite bounce case. It has all the protection, but it also comes with a very cheek style 
you can style it with their accessories too like phone strap or the beads if you're more of a minimalist Casetify also has your clear cases their clear cases are optimized to prevent yellowing with long-lasting clarity via their uv defender technology the clear cases have a 6.6 .6 feet drop protection you can also customize it with like letters you put your name the clear cases are Casetify's slimmest case with tactical buttons and comfy grip the cases are also made from 65 percent recyclable and plant-based materials if you're more of a creative Casetify has got cases for you as well Casetify has artist programs where they partner with exclusive artists and work with a diverse and global set of creators and artists so my favorite one is this one that i showed earlier it says you are exactly where you need to be i love this one because this is such a good reminder for me as i navigate through work life personal relationships and i just love the color this is their collab with the design studio called ice cream color i also picked out other ones for my parents and it's just so adorable so whoever you are and whatever you're into casetify has got cases for you you can go to www.casetify.com slash lillian chu and you can get 15 percent off your entire order on casetify today In this call with data science, I usually just preset my screen to talk about the growth report. Together, we will one, complement insights with more comprehensive data and do more complex deep dives if needed. Two, we will also adjust how we articulate insights. For instance, one thing I learned is that say, the November new user acceleration happened right when we launched the marketing campaign. But since we cannot attribute exactly how many new users came from the marketing campaign, like there's no way to measure that. So instead of saying new users saw acceleration in November from the marketing campaign, we say correlated to the campaign. The difference here is it is not 100% attributable. It is more directional and correlated. A lot of people have been asking me what's the difference between what I do as a business analyst versus data scientist or even versus data analyst. There are a lot of differences, different paths. I'm gonna talk about it and break it down for you. To keep it structured, I'll first talk about the key differences between these three roles, the career trajectories for each, and also help you figure out which one is right for you. I do want to caveat that these observations are based on my experiences and applicable for tech companies only. Just take it with a grain of salt and please don't come at me. Typically, a project life cycle starts with having the data, then analyzing the data to create insights, and based on the insights, provide business strategies for the teams to ultimately grow the business. All three roles will need to have certain levels of proficiency throughout each of these three areas. But data scientists, they lean more heavily in the data part. The data might not even exist yet. So they're tasked with building data pipelines to ingest the data, running advanced modelings, or even designing and running A-B tests to be able to create data and store them in data sets that can be analyzed later by the analysts or by themselves. Data analysts, they analyze the existing data in data sets with SQL to provide insights and create data visualizations with dashboards to answer questions for the teams. They lean more heavily into analytics and insights. How they differ from data scientists is that data analysts only make sense out of existing data, while data scientists create new ways of capturing data like we saw A-B testing, advanced modeling, and analyzing them for analysts to utilize. Data analyst jobs aren't that common in tech, but when they do exist, they typically are embedded on a specific team that only provide data insights to that team and fulfill all their data needs. I'll tell you why in a bit. Business analysts like me, we lean more into the business strategy part. There aren't a standardized title, but if you want to apply to this role, tech companies call a strategy and ops analyst on the strategy and operations team, like my actual title at work is, or even biz ops or business strategy. So don't just look up business analyst titles. In terms of what I do, I also analyze existing data to provide insights like data analysts do, but I will have to take it a step further to build business strategies based on the insights that I see. My ultimate goal here is to execute the strategies with the teams to grow the business. For instance, let's say I work at Netflix. If I see that users are declining in the US among 25 to 34 demographic, I will have to analyze data and provide insights and business recommendations to relevant teams like let's say marketing, product, partnerships, etc. So they can then come up with tactics. So marketing will do an influencer program and partner will do a pricing bundle. My job is to then build a strategy that consolidate all these tactics together. Like that say, the strategy is to accelerate user growth among 25 to 34 in the US by driving a million new users in 2022. Once we have the strategy, I also need to work on the operational piece. So how are we working cross-functionally together? How do we build the way of working? 
How do we make sure that the projects are all on track? How are we measuring impact? Usually, business strategies are very cross-functional in nature, so there are lots of strategic thinking and stakeholder management skills involved. And since data analysts and business analysts both analyze existing data already, most tech companies don't have the data analyst role. They instead make the data analyst role part of the business analyst role. And that's why I tell people I do 60% data analytics work and 40% business strategy. What about the career trajectory? For business analysts, there are three common paths I've seen. One is you go deeper into the business strategy side of things, or how tech companies call it, strategy and operation, biz ops, like I mentioned. And that's what my team is. The more junior business analysts you are, the more data analytics you will do. And once you become more senior, have the business sense, strategic thinking, and relationship with teams, that's when you lean more heavily into business strategy. Specifically, thinking about how to grow the business on a high level, enable the teams to see your vision, build a way of working, and actually execute on those strategies. The second path is you go into other generalist roles that still enable you to have a broad scope of knowledge about many topics like you do as a business analyst, like product managers and program managers in tech. Third path is you go into a specialist role. Since as a business analyst, you're driving strategies with different teams, you can then decide which team you're passionate about, such as data scientists if you really want to focus on the data work, or partnerships if you want to dive into the external facing part. For data scientists, there are two common paths. First path is you become an individual contributor, or what we call ICs. You don't manage people, you instead become an expert in certain subject areas in data science, like let's say forecasting, where you know different types of forecasting models, you know how to train the models, you know the statistical theories behind it, and know how to apply the models in real business context. As an IC, you focus on deepening your craft. The second path is people manager. Instead of deepening your data science craft, you'll be managing data scientists under you. You'll figure out a way of working for the team, answer broader business questions to support business or product teams in decision making. Now for data analysts, as I mentioned, lots of tech companies don't have data analysts because that would just be part of the business analyst scope or the data scientist scope already. And most data analysts I've seen either go more into the data end, which then becomes a data scientist, or into the business end, which then becomes a business analyst route. However, if you want to pivot into tech, picking up on a data analyst role at a non-tech company is a good way to do so because the data analytics and insight skills is the foundation across both data scientists and business analysts. So which role is right for you? Data scientist is more for you if you like to get deep into the numbers, you like to problem solve with data, figuring out how to measure things, and actually building the data models or tools. It's less people facing and more numbers driven Business analyst is more for you if you like to think more broadly about what business opportunities there are with the insights that you scoped out. If you like to think about the business logic, build a business strategy, and enable team to see your vision to then execute on strategies together. It will be more people facing. A key skill we call it is your ability to influence people without authority. How do you make people work on projects with you even though you're not their manager or you're not on their immediate team? And also business sense, which is how you use data insights to identify business opportunities. And that usually comes with really understanding how the business works and how to grow the business. For lunch, I wanna make kimbab. I think I mastered making this and I really wanna show you guys because this is now my favorite lunch menu. I'm gonna season my rice with gochujang and sesame oil. You can see how much I've scooped from it already. <laughs> Just a little bit. So a lot of my coworkers have been finding out about my YouTube channel. A lot as in like more than 20 of them. Do I feel awkward about it? Of course, yes. In the beginning, I didn't want them to judge me or think of me differently. I didn't want to get in trouble. But with time, I got used to it. This just applies to everything in life. With enough time, you can get used to almost anything. So don't let the initial feeling hold you back. YouTube is my little hobby and now I'm okay to be seen. I went from doing YouTube very secretly versus now I just own it. I'm not gonna openly talk about my YouTube, but when my coworkers ask me about it, I will be like, yes, I have a YouTube. What do you wanna know about it? Do you wanna start a YouTube channel? I can teach you how to do it. Do you wanna be on my channel? Let's coordinate a time. Do you want to work on a project with me? Let's do it. Pro tip I learned is to dab some water over the end bit so that it sticks better when you roll. Hold on to the seaweed with your finger a little bit and you roll with the mat. So 
And you roll until you can see your rice. I just like usually add whatever I want to it. Really not a lot of guidelines. Sesame oil. So I'm gonna reach out to someone at Growth Team who has um, results for an initiative that we just launched. Uh, I might just like make a coffee and chill for a bit. I love your picture. Is that like a playlist? Wait, where are you based in again? It it friends. Okay. But you're where are you from again? Sorry. Oh right. Biggest thing I've learned about sending emails or like sending big report out is like don't send it out when you finish the draft. Take a 10 minute break and come back and look at it. For me, I always find little mistakes or typos. Sometimes I'll even like test out the email by sending it to myself and then see what the graphs look like on my phone. If it's too small, I make it bigger. Okay, I think I'm gonna send it. All right, sent. I'm going to my chiropractor. Hey Google, stop. I had really bad tension headache. She taught me a few stretching exercises. Try it, let me know how you feel. You wanna stabilize one arm first under your thigh. Use your other hand to pull your head to the other side. Oh, this feels so good. Two more exercises. Put your hand behind your skull. Look at this armpit. You should feel the stretch like this side of your neck. Instead of looking at this armpit, look at this armpit. Midline of your neck. Now it's time for my YouTube work. Oh my gosh, am I cutting the deadline? Okay. I have a video that has a sponsor. They will set like multiple deadlines for different stages of the sponsorship. 71, almost there. This is a really big file. It's 30 gigabytes, so it's taking a while. So I've been working on a special project for the past few weeks now. I'll be sharing more um, in my future videos. But basically, I had this idea two months ago and I decided to, you know, just like go for it. Why not? Now I'm just putting the time down to actually make it happen. I usually never sleep this late. I think my dinner was too spicy and now my stomach is like on fire. I just couldn't sleep. And all of a sudden I just have like a lot of ideas for how to make the slides that you saw earlier about the differences between data scientist and business analyst. I want to show you what I usually do. So 
this is the behind the scenes of this looks really rough but this is like part of my thinking process i have to write all my thoughts down organize it and i'll start visualizing it and i'll start building a structure i tend to write ideas down whenever i think about it for this one i also had to do a bunch of fact checking with my friends who are in data analyst role and data scientist roles because sometimes i'm like oh my gosh there's like a lot of people watching this so i want to make sure i get the information right i'm gonna like drink some water and go to bed that's gonna be my next video bye